We're still scared of cancer and don't know how to beat it. If today is an average day, just under 17,000 people died from cancer. In many ways, we're losing the fight and we don't understand why. So what do you do if things aren't going your way? Declare war, of course. That's what US President Richard Nixon did when he signed the National Cancer Act of 1971 in a bid to increase research and improve the understanding of cancer biology and the development of more effective cancer treatments such as targeted drug therapies. We've been looking hard for a cure. Most subscribe to the fact that cancer is a genetic disease. They believe that, according to the somatic mutation theory, cancer arises from a stepwise march of key mutations leading to cells becoming cancerous. Many think that all we need to do is find the genes and target them with drugs. Things look peachy as gene sequencing technology improved exponentially, enabling the Cancer Genome Atlas to begin in 2005. This aims to catalogue genetic mutations responsible for cancer, using genome sequencing and bioinformatics to develop targeted drugs. But after many billions of dollars have been spent, the results are disappointing. Most of the 700 or so cancer drugs made to target cancer genes only extend life by a couple of months or so, although there is new hope with gene therapy and immune therapy models. So why is this going so badly? Well, some are turning to the past for answers. In particular, to the long forgotten theory that cancer cells have a very different metabolism to normal cells in our body. That they have a preference for glucose and don't do well without it. The mind behind this discovery belongs to Dr. Otto Heinrich Warburg. Otto Warburg was a German physiologist, medical doctor and Nobel laureate. He served as an officer in the Elite Ulan Cavalry Regiment during the First World War and was awarded the Iron Cross First Class for bravery. Warburg is considered one of the 20th century's leading biochemists. He was the sole recipient of the Nobel Prize in Physiology in 1931. In total, he was nominated for the award 47 times over the course of his career. Warburg hypothesized that cancer growth is caused by tumor cells mainly generating energy by anaerobic breakdown of glucose, known as fermentation or anaerobic respiration. This is in contrast to healthy cells, which mainly generate energy from using oxygen or aerobic respiration within the mitochondria. According to Dr. Warburg, cancer should be interpreted as a mitochondrial dysfunction. Cancer has countless secondary causes, like the mythical chimera, cut off one head and there's another. But Warburg believed Cancer is the replacement of the respiration of oxygen in normal body cells by fermentation of sugar. Today, mutations in oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes are thought to be responsible for malignant transformation, and the metabolic changes are considered to be a result of these mutations rather than a cause. But with a lack of progress from research in the genetic direction, some are looking into metabolism and diet. The ketogenic diet is proposed as one such method to lower glucose availability to cancers and make them more vulnerable. The diet involves eating less carbohydrates, the body used in ketone bodies as a dominant energy source. Otto Warburg died in 1970 at the ripe old age of 86. When frustrated by the lack of acceptance of his ideas, Warburg was known to quote an aphorism, science progresses, not because scientists change their minds, but rather because scientists attached to erroneous views die and are replaced. Research into health effects of metabolism and diets are often hard to get research funding for, perhaps because there is no drug to sell if successful. And maybe if the war on cancer continues in defeat, we should start looking for new weapons in the armory. Thanks for watching. Please share, like and subscribe for new videos every week.